Nice to meet you, and thank you for being here. Thanks. How's it going in the entertainment world and your show and your life? Yeah, I mean, it just keeps going. It keeps blowing up and, and still doing well. I think we're the run- longest-running show on Netflix. And um, Stop, really? Yeah, with uh, yeah, going on season eight, and I think seven is the longest that it's run, any show's run, so. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's amazing. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. And, and it's been a good experience. Yeah, it has. I mean, you know, there's always ups and downs. There have been a couple, couple moments where I'm like, I am not doing this anymore. It's not worth it. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I calm down and I'm like, okay, maybe it is. I just have to go out to my punching bag, get a little workout in. And then I'm like, okay, I can handle it. But who are the top five brokers in California? Not, not doesn't have to be famous, but who are are they famous? Um, uh, top five. Um, I would say, um, well, Frederick Eklund is out here now, um, and he's really good. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's like Joyce Ray is really good. Um, Brandon and Rainy Williams are really good. Um, uh, there's a lot of re- there's only maybe five or six like really really top agents that do all the multi-million dollar homes. I mean, Sean Elliott is, is amazing too, but he does all over. He does, um, New York, Miami and LA, but that man still is, is able to get like these hundred plus million dollar listings all the time. So, well, I would wonder if the, cause it sounds like the biggest people, which I think might be the case in New York too, the biggest ones aren't the ones that are necessarily famous because they have very private billionaire clients and maybe that, that, that they don't want to take their eye off the ball. I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there, there are quite a few of them that, that are not on shows uh, and they don't have anything. I mean, uh, Sean will make appearances on, he had something, I'm not sure how well it did. He had some show on the East coast, I think in the Hamptons, um, oh. what it's called. Um, I'm not sure how well it, did. I think I know what you're talking about. Cause I saw, like a modern Sag Harbor house that they were marketing on there. And I don't remember what it was, but I think, yeah, yeah, I think I saw that. And it was not very good, but it was interesting to me because I'm interested in real estate. I, um, I, I'll buy a house with less hesitation than I'll order a pasta. (laughs) And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like I, because, but I, I, I just know. I and buy out in LA. <laughs> no, well, I've thought about Malibu. It's just too far to justify, but I've thought about Malibu. That's, I would be in Malibu, no question. And yeah. every time I go, I think about that as an investment and when it drops, et cetera. But I always buy personal real estate that I love and that I am sort of emotional about, but that I treat like an investment where if I had to, I, could live there. If I had to, I could sell it in a minute. It's very like marketable to anyone. And I'm always designing with investment in mind and I'm always buying when it's low. And so I just bought an apartment in Manhattan and I walked it. I just, it was usually, it's just a thought in my head. And then when I see the right thing, I just walked in (laughs) and I had it by the end of the day. I literally did have it by the end of the day. And the same thing happened in the Hamptons because I'll secret something that I want And then I'll have, then I'll get it. And it happened to me in Connecticut. I had two houses at the same time, Hamptons, two houses at the same time. And then you're sitting there going, which one am I going to keep? And which one I will have to rent out or sell one. But I love, I love personal real estate. Yeah. Uh, That's, that's what I, I would love to start doing that as well. And that's the goal to adding and adding to, to our portfolio. We just did that with this house that we looked for so long for our personal house in LA and nothing just felt right. And, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to, going to buy something until I know, cause if we're going to live in it, I want it to be perfect. I see homes all day long, every single day. Yes. I know when I walk in, I'm like, yes. Um, and there's some, I, I have done that. My wedding venue, I did that. It was out of my budget though. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, there are certain homes where I'm like, uh, you know, eventually this, you just know when you You know, but you also have to be nimble that you may love it, but you have to think about 
how it's marketable to somebody else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So how savvy on the housewives are you? I had never seen this episode and believe it or not, I'm not that savvy. I know many of the people, but I, I don't know some of the people and don't know the conflicts. Yeah. Um, I'm not that savvy with it, but funny enough, I, I always joke around like on our show about, uh, the housewives and stuff. I'm like, come on, we're not going to be uh, uh, like what the housewives and stuff, but I've really never seen it. So <laughs> that's funny. You, you say <laughs> it. Yeah. Cause I just like, I've always heard like the wine throwing and all this stuff. Yes. And I watched that episode and I was like, I, I should never say that again, actually, because they had more of like camaraderie and, and like, you know, supporting each other than we do on our show. Yes. Oh, that was oh, a tame oh, episode oh, though. Oh, I've seen oh, Lisa throw a wine glass. That was a tame episode, but yes, Beverly Hills, from my experience, meeting them personally yeah. and being on that show, they, they're more savvy. Yeah. They're very aware of the cameras and that, you know, so, so they're very aware of what's going on. Yeah. I know Crystal. I've, I've seen her out multiple times. I was on a panel with her at one oh. point. And so I know, I know her just um, from red carpets and stuff like that. Got um, it. Okay. Yeah, so but- this is sort of a whole event that is at the house with Harry Hamlin cooking and, and they sort of lead up and let us know that Harry is always the one doing the cooking and he's cooked for this group before. And that's sort of his thing, which is actually nice. They should do a, he should do a cooking show or something. And I've been to their house cause I used to be pretty friendly with, with Lisa. So I've been to this house and Kyle is right that it's a nice property. Like it's a nice property and it's very homey. A couple of times in the show and in all shows, I am watching and thinking to myself, like about clutter in the house. Like I always am looking at what what's <laughs> everywhere because I'm like, I'm psychotic about stuff. So I'm looking all over at all the olive oil and all the dishes and all the stuff in their fridge. And um, it reminded me recently, I was talking to another housewife who said to me that on Beverly Hills, the show never pays for events or parties and that right. the people pay and that, and this person said that Lisa Rinna never wanted to really have a party because she doesn't want to like pay for, you know, a, a TV quote unquote, quote unquote, fake party. Right. And they really are TV parties. And it's funny because my parties that I had on Housewives of New York, they did pay. I, I, I definitely, yeah, a hundred percent. I wouldn't spend. I for ours. Interesting. No, Jason, if it's a company party, Jason pays for everything, but they never pay for any of ours, anything we do it because they, they say, no, it's, it's your life. It's your event. You pay for it. But they then will make you have an event that you might not have. And that's not like, I would not normally have a s'mores and whores party. <laughs> we just say no. We're like, well, yeah. fine, but it's going to be on our terms. I mean, if you want this big lamb party, uh, that's not what we would normally do. Like if, if, so many times Jason would normally do it. He's, he's a bit extra. So he does throw big, massive things and he loves doing it. It doesn't bother him at all. He spent, he spent so much money on parties. Well, it's, it's in line with the labels and the logos and the showing of the stuff that this group in particular wants to have a big pissing contest party. Not that that's what this was at all. Lisa's party was not that at all. But this group wants to have a made for TV party, just like they wear made for TV outfits, you know, like that only the camera people are seeing. <laughs> yeah. So, and your show's like that too. Yeah. It, it pretty is. I mean, I'm not really like that. I don't feel as much. I mean, if I'm going to throw a party, I'm very low key and very, I would throw an intimate dinner party, like very tasteful dinner party. I, I would not have like a, a 200 people there. Yeah, uh, exactly. We planned 300 and there's almost 500. Okay. So now we're at the house and Harry's cooking and talking about the bolognese. And I like watching them shop together and I like their dynamic. There's always speculation again about their dynamic. And I just think that every marriage is, is not one size fits all. And I like their partnership. I like them together and I want to taste his bolognese. Me too. And <laughs> now we get to, and we're at Kathy's and they're doing this tennis and I'm distracted. And I've been to Kathy's too, but I don't think I've been to this house and I'm distracted by what 
structure is behind them playing tennis and there's like all this stuff in the window. And I'm thinking about like what Kathy, who does all these crazy parties and has so much stuff, what she has in that storage unit. And I was thinking when I saw this house, because there's a lot of house talk on this show, that I personally... I like a small house. Now I have a very big house and I have a compound where I am now, but I also have a different homes that are smaller. I've had both. Yeah. I like a small, manageable, perfect house. Not like all these places where stuff can accumulate, dust can accumulate, you have to manage it. And so Kathy's house is beautiful, but I liked Erica's house. I actually did. I liked, I mean, I don't, I'm not a renter, so I don't right. like the word rent. Right. Because I like things, I like to do things to things, and and I would never feel right improving upon a rental. Right. And I want to actually ask you about rental versus owning, in your opinion, because in some cases I'm sure it's smarter financially. But for me, I'm psychologically never a renter. Right. But I liked Erica's home. It just seemed like small and perfect. I agree. I'm not. No matter if I were a billionaire, I would not have a, a huge home. It's just not. It's not for me, but I like the style of her home. The whole exterior was uh, of Kathy's was absolutely stunning. I think just mm-hmm. on a smaller scale. Um, right. And uh, I guess for some people, it'd be a very huge family, whatever. Or if you just like it, that's fine. But I would have it on a smaller scale. I, I just don't need that much space. It's It's just more work. And she does have three kids and the three kids' kids, and she loves to entertain. And that does make some sense. And yeah. And I was going to say they have a house in the Hamptons too, but those are their two homes and they really are home people. Yeah. I thought it was a relatable conversation for Erica and you don't know because you haven't seen the show. Well, I saw this episode though. No, I mean in life. the oh, Historically, oh. Erica has always like got a brick wall and hard and I haven't seen it. I've probably seen it my whole life, maybe 10 episodes Erica's been in, but yeah. she's like a brick wall. And here she's being relatable. And what she's talking about to me is relatable in that she was on someone else's program. Like she, you know, just add hot young girl, married the rich guy. And she was on his program, which was just insert her. And it felt like now she liked being on her program. And I also liked her being vulnerable about that because we watched her do a song called It's Expensive to Be Me and talk about $50,000 a month in glam and travel with a glam squad to Dubai and really fly on planes and lay it on really thick and really braggy, you know, Uh, really braggy about money. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was extremely relatable. I I mean, it it happens all the time, but at different levels and, and, you know, in different situations, but so many times in a marriage, you know, if it's money, if it's just control, whatever it is, I mean, like that is your image and you really don't have a voice. So it's almost, even if you go through tough times, um, making that transition, it's a really amazing and liberating, um, to, to find that voice and that freedom. Um, I've had to, I've done it <laughs> many times. Um, and, and it, there is something, I think she's much more likable now. Same. Um, yeah, it's just like, you know, if you're hu- she's humanized and and it's, Same. it's relatable where you're like, oh my God, you you can feel her emotions and and um and yeah, I liked it. I thought it was very brave of her to do that. She has an identity now where before her identity was a persona, an image, a path of puss, the money, the plane. No matter what rich person you're married to they're counting on some level. They know what you're doing. They know what you're spending on some level. People think that they are, they don't know and they don't care. I had a friend who was with a very wealthy man years ago. Oh, he doesn't care. Oh, he doesn't care. And she was running amok and I, he cares. They care. And even if they don't care, they know. And there's nothing like not having to ask somebody or answer to somebody when Uh you want to buy something. Yep. Yeah, I think Lisa said um, said that too on on the show that they have separate accounts too. I mean, she knows everything going on, but they also have separate accounts, and that's what Mermaid and I do that too. We have a joint account, but we both have separate accounts, and and we mostly do because I've been screwed over in the past. Wow! So I, I, so- I will not allow all of my money. To be and 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 remains a polar opposite. He's so stubborn and won't. I mean, just 
too much pride to ever take money. He's like, I don't need your money. And he's, he is so prideful. But I still just, for my own sake, my own peace of mind, no one can take that. It's only my name. It's only like, no one can do that to me. And um, because my ex-husband did it and I won't, I won't ever let that happen again. I don't think I've ever fully shared a bank account with someone. I, I think I'd sooner share a toothbrush. I I swear to God, which is disgusting, but (laughs) sharing a bank account with someone. And I know I've heard, and I had it on my talk show, a woman say, when you get married and you should have one different account that has a different credit card that's like for the house and for the household. And that sounds like organized, but it also sounds not like bullshit, but not real. Like it's like this little thing that you do to pretend that you're together, but that's like the house (laughs) account. And you could easily be like at the end of the month, let's just split everything too. Like it just feels not, Yeah, it would feel really, I can't imagine asking someone, can I buy this apartment or can I buy this bag or just even them knowing, even them knowing the self-consciousness. In my opinion, you should never have to tell um, someone like your, your partner, as long as you're not doing anything like that is, you know, um, disrespecting the marriage. I mean, but it's nobody's business if we go buy a purse or diamond earrings or whatever it is. It's, it's not his business. You work for your money. You can spend it the way you want. A hundred percent. I'm a big fan of having someone's credit card. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm a big fan of having someone's credit card. That's a big, I'm a big, that's a big, big, that's a big Bethany. That, yeah, that's big. That's big on the Bethany list. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah. Uh, poor, poor Paul. Okay. Poor Paul. Um. So... I thought the Kyle family Christmas card, it, you know, it made me tearfully sentimental. Yes. They're a solid, good couple. And they were both very social together in similar friend groups. And they, you know, they they have different priorities now and grew apart. Hopefully they'll find their way back. Sometimes it just takes like, you know, some time apart. And, and hopefully they'll find their way back to each other and, and work. As friends, out. I don't think they'll find their, I don't, I don't know, but I don't think. And then they talked about Kim with the holidays being alone. I think that's also relatable and the sisters want to kind of take care of her. But I was thinking right now, cause it's the holidays. Some people want to be alone during the holidays and it feels worse for other people to want to feel sorry for you. If you want to be alone or are alone during the holidays, that's kind of worse. Yeah. If you truly want to be alone, if, if you're just alone, you have nobody, you, can, you have no options. That's that that is sad, and but if you really do, there are a lot of people that just you you're just in a place in your life you just don't really want to be involved at the time, and that's okay. Um, I mean, if they want to ask one time, just like, hey, you're welcome to come. But if she truly wants to be alone, let her. <laughs> well, it's a pandemic during this episode, and. Yeah. It's also the holidays I'm realizing more and more people want to do it in their way, the way they want to cook, they want to cater, they want to, you know, and it's very hard to find your own identity during the holidays when you're being pushed in so many different directions. Yeah, it is. I think, I mean, I I think that everyone should just, you know, stand their ground. If that's what you want, do it. I mean, it's not a one size fits all. Everybody has different needs at different times and it's the holidays you should be happy yeah or or if you have to be sad reflect and the pressure of the day doesn't have to be everything like it's the 25th today i have to be happy because then if you're not happy you feel worse than it just being a day that you want to relax and watch movies you know like people have to give themselves a break i think especially during the holidays it comes on quickly and then if it doesn't become everything you wanted it to be either as a kid or as an you know in a relationship or a divorce, it becomes, it can crash pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Sometimes it's easier and better to just treat it like a day, do whatever it is that you need mentally, physically, whatever yeah. um, on that day. There'll be next year. There'll be yeah. many, many more. <laughs> so yeah, well, you're right. It's just do it. Everyone just needs to do what is best for them. I think yep. in general in life, just People stay out of each other's business. <laughs> yeah. That book was amazing. It was a Dolce Gabbana pink Queens book. Oh. I don't even know where you find that because I looked it up online after. And Sutton is in it twice. Like, that is a queen. Really? Mm-hmm. She was in the book twice. She- oh, I missed that part. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. No, that is. That's pretty epic. 
That's kind of epic. She's in a Dolce yeah. Gabbana book, wait, dressed because I guess she was married to a very wealthy man, and like she probably was draped in Dolce. It's very good for her. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> good for her. So we go to Garcelle's house, also cute, charming house. I like Garcelle. I know Garcelle. I've met Garcelle. Okay. She is one of the probably five people that asked me before she was on the show what she should do or how is she going to survive. And I always stay quiet during those conversations, almost to the point of being standoffish because I just don't want any part of giving any kind of housewives advice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know how how it feels to be on, on that show, but I, I do have people ask me on ours, like a deal for the OC. Um, I've had people call and ask <laughs> like, for advice and you know, I just, I mean, I do give a little bit of advice, but I'm like, everybody's different. Because it's a different game now. It, and mine is 15 years ago. We were like bedrock. We were like, cars were starting with like our feet at the bottom of the car. We were like, uh -huh. you know, horse and wagons. It was 15 years ago. It was not the same. We didn't uh -huh. have HD and we didn't have Twitter. Wow. I, I, I can't believe how fast time flies. I, it does not feel like 15 years ago. <laughs> we didn't have, we didn't have social media. Really? You're we didn't have glam budgets. We didn't have green screens. We didn't have backgrounds that were like in a studio. It was in your own actual house with your actual wall behind you. I am so jealous. Like that is the time to do um, Housewives or any sort of reality show when there's no social media, nope. no haters every single day criticizing every single thing you say and do. It's no, and there's no glam. You were yourself. You actually could be who you really were every day. You didn't like walk in wearing a couture outfit, pretending that that's what you have lunch in. You just like were wearing what I'm wearing right now. Like where were you at? You know what I mean? You were just yeah. normal women in New York that some of us had money, but even the ones who had money were still wearing sweatpants. Yeah. Now like an exaggerated version. So I don't know how I would advise. So anyway, <clears throat> I met Garcelle at Mark Burnett's house. I've always liked her. And that's when she asked me how to navigate it. And I was just like, oh, uh, you know, hey, you look great. You know, just like probably just like <laughs> skirting the issue. But I like Garcelle. And do we have any idea why her son is studying Japanese in particular? It's a very specific language in high school to be studying. That's such a teenager expecting his mom to be quiet in a kitchen, which is the center of the house when you could easily go upstairs. Like it was so ridiculous. She was like, oh. <gasps> Shh, everybody, like, what are you talking about? You're in the middle of the kitchen doing your homework. Like, go upstairs. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs> go to a different room. Like, in your room, you should have, like, a desk in your room anyway. The kitchen counter is not where you do homework or you do something. Like, go to your room. Yeah, or do it here in two beds. Like, learn <laughs> Japanese while I'm cooking and while your brother's, like, what? I don't even know. That's such teen life where, like, parents let the kids run the show. I, they, that, I just thought the same thing. I thought, well, maybe they just did that for, for show purposes, like to give some sort of a thing, because I, uh, surely she would have just been like, this is a kitchen. We cook and we do dishes in a kitchen. If you need to study in your room, if you don't like the noise, then don't be in the kitchen. So true. She wasn't doing like a cabaret show. I was like, yeah, if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, she was she was doing what you do in the kitchen. Like she wasn't having sex. Right. She was <laughs> unloading the dishwasher and cooking. Exactly. Right. That's what That's homework is done. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, me, but but that would have been really this is exactly what here's me reenacting that with Bryn. Mom, she, I'm like, are you are you okay right now? <laughs> Like, and the kid actually said to the brother, are you okay? The, the kid, the kid doing the homework, I think his name is Jax, said yeah. to the brother, are you okay? It's like, I would have said to Bryn, hi, this is a whole house. Other people live here. This is the kitchen. Yeah. I was thinking about Lisa and Harry, and I was thinking about all of the homegrown tomatoes and how I'm a fit. I fiddle around the house, like with organizing and things like I'm a fiddler, packing yeah. gifts, doing, um, I was wondering if that's like, if he's like the one who's fiddling around in the garden, it just seems like a nice thing for people to take up like golf where you could like just play around in the garden and then have fruits and vegetables. I do. I have a garden. You yeah. do? Yeah. Tell me. Okay. So I, I have to be honest about this though, because uh, my husband is more like Harry where he's good at all those things. It's my ideas to do these things. And I, I buy the stuff and I plan it all out. And then he upkeeps everything because I forget. <laughs> so um, he is, he's got a green thumb and I don't, but I want to. So I go check on him. I'm like, yeah, we've got all like the plants and I'll go uh, pick them. He 
does all the upkeep and he will actually plant them because he knows how to do everything and wow. he's much better at it. And he's a much better cook too. Uh, but I do make pasta and I'm very good at bolognese and, and chili, but I'm very bad at cook in general. Um, but my husband can cook quite well. You're good with ground beef. Like, like Harry. And he's very, he's very handy. Um, so around the house. So that's nice. I, I, this is how crazy I am. I have two be- I have an apple orchard and the problem is, well, first of all, I had a dental issue this year. So like I couldn't even eat the apples and my heart is broken. It's the first year we had like the most gorgeous, they look like Fiji or Gala apples, but I digress. And they're so sweet. But the problem is it upsets me because there's so many apples and what are we going to do? Like now I'm forcing people to take apples home. We're forcing people to eat applesauce. I feel like I'm giving ba- baskets of apples away. So if I had all of these vegetables okay. and things, I would feel like, a responsibility to the garden, not just to take care of it, but to like distribute its goods. And I I think that'd be too much of a job for me. Um, why can't you sell them? Well, the, I don't need another job. That's a real job. <laughs> I'm saying like, what are we yeah. doing with all these tomatoes? Like I need one tomato tonight or two tomatoes. I don't need 70. So Harry, yeah. you know, thank God for the show. So he could cook and use all those tomatoes. I, I would love to go pick a tomato and have it. But then the other 30, are gonna go I guess I'd, yeah, I guess, but it's compost. I tell everyone that works with me, just go just do your food shopping outside there. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I would have to do that too, because I do, I've got avocados and tomatoes and, um, I, well, there's a bunch of things out there, but, um, but I've let a couple of them go bad because <sighs> yeah, we just, and I don't mean to, and I get so upset when it happens. Cause I'm like, no, there's my homegrown one. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly, you're proving my point. And like, if you have a giant thing of basil and you need just a little, now you got to make jars of pesto. It feels like a project. Yeah. I, I tell people go take our basil too. Cause the basil goes so fast. Shit. Oh, All right. God. Here's what I think would be cool. So I have to have everybody. Come. I was like, pick it, pick it. It still does it. It's still not enough. Like there's still extra all the time. If I were shooting a show, what I would do right now, and I might do it in my real life anyway, is I would say to my whole team, everybody decide one thing that you want. Cause I have a, we work building on this property. So my okay. staff works in a separate structure. Okay. So I would say to everybody, what do you each want? And we'd each plant something for us. And then everybody would get to take vegetables and fruits home because I have a lot of people here. I probably like six to 10 people. So if everybody took, maybe I'm going to grow a garden based on this, based yeah. on Harry and Lisa and you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's very satisfying though, like to, to be able to pick your own things. There is something very satisfying about it. When do you plant? I, I think it depends on, on the thing. Yeah. The thing. All right. I'm going to look into this. I need a, yeah, I don't I mean, need, I'm not that good of a gardener. It was just that like, I want it on my property. I had a nursery come, like actually planted different types of trees. And then, um, we bought the, all the herbs and, and, or upkeeping them, but I don't know if we did it at the right time of year or not. All I, right. I'm going to find out, but you're also in LA. So that's a produce capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So Dorit, um, it's funny. She was talking about her bridal collection. I don't know what ended up happening with it, but Nectaria, They've reached out to me. They actually reached out to me to make me a wedding dress before. And I then connected that that was someone that it sounds like Dorit is doing like a collaboration with them for one collection. It doesn't sound like Nectaria is going to be her company. It sounds like one of these sort of housewives business things where it's not really your business, but it's like a thing to talk about on the show. Like and it's a line kind of thing. Right. Like Kyle had a store, Alien 2, but it wasn't really her store. It was Alien 2 store, but it was called Kyle because a brand has come to you. You're on Beverly Hills. How do we get involved? And so that's what this sounds like. And I bet you it's beautiful. I'd love to actually have a dress or see a dress. I I, I don't know if this comes to fruition, but I like the idea. Uh, yeah. I saw the one that they um, they just showed the picture of um, on, on the episode and it looked stunning. Um, so I don't know. I don't know either if, if it actually got made or, or I don't know. What did you do for your wedding? What did you wear? Um, you know, they actually, they're not there anymore. It was, um, it was called Flora Bear and it's okay. a boutique, um, beautiful boutique, um, a bridal store on Mower's place. Um, so charming. And the, and the dresses were just stunning. And so uh, it was actually the opposite of what I thought I was going to do. It was not the style that I thought I was going to pick. I had my mind, like 
I had a vision of what I wanted. And then everything just kept getting messed up. Like we, it was our third venue like that we went through the first one production and the, um, and the venue could not get on the same page. So I already kind of started deciding like the whole vibe of the wedding started picking things out. And, and I was like, guys, come on, we have to get this locked in. And we started doing stuff. I put down the deposit and this happened twice. Mm -hmm. And and then and then they were like, no, it doesn't work. I was like, oh my god! And Sean Elliott actually helped me um, find this other one. It was this gorgeous house in Malibu, and then um, the husband and wife got divorced, or they decided to get divorced. And uh, the wife was still like, it's it's fine, it's fine. You can still do the wedding there. The husband was really pissed and was like, nope. He's like, I don't want any wedding here. We're not doing it. So five weeks before my wedding, what? Yes, uh, five weeks before, and we're filming. And they legit production made me, um, they would not let him go. They're like, okay, wait, because he called production for saying, listen, we got a problem. They just backed out. And so you guys aren't going to be able to film there. She can't have the wedding there. They're like, don't tell her yet. Don't don't call her. Because they wanted it for the show. Wanted it for the show. So I le- I legit thought he was, he, this was just for the show. And they never do that. But I was like, they never, they always say, don't answer your phone too, if we're filming. and so. And they, uh, I was sitting there and well, and they were, my phone was ringing. I just turned it over. They're like, no, go ahead and answer it. Go ahead. I was like, and I just kind of like looked away and they're like, Mary, go ahead and answer it. I was like, oh, oh shit. What, what are they doing? And so I pick it up. I see it's Sean. I pick it up and I'm like, they're put, I didn't really buy it at first. I thought they're just messing with me. Um, just to see what I'm going to do. Cause no way. Why would they have no, to- five weeks before they would never. Before. But they they did they they were just like please just wait until like this time where where we can catch her real her real right fun. of course that's so, gold yeah and after we were done I was like what that wasn't real what right I was like I mean what why what happened <laughs> and they're like no it was, that was real we just asked them to call while we were on camera and I was like no no Mary that was real um they they backed out and it was. Oh my God. Whose deposit? Wait, did you really pay for your, don't tell me you paid for your own wedding and gave it away for content. What? You know, I didn't pay a goddamn dime in my wedding. I mean, I got, I got like things where. Trade outs. Yeah. Like trades for stuff. I still had to pay a good amount because the the show was still new at the time. I mean, but I still got quite a few things. I got discounts or, or for trade for things for, because it was a show. I can't imagine. Yeah, I I'll can't imagine paying for a wedding that was covered by a television show, not because of, not only because you're giving away something that's so valuable, because it's not the same. Like, it's like saying when I go on a vacation with Ramona uh-huh. to Mexico or somewhere that I would pay for that. Like, that's, it's, it's like torture going on show vacation. Well, see, so ours was, uh, we were at the beginning of season two and, and there were, it wasn't like there was anything it was a brand new show and we were just, lo- we were just happy. Like second season. I know. Up. I just never would. I, like, yeah. Oh my God. So, so like, okay. I know. And I say yes to everything. I'm I know. About that. I'm like, I'm a team player. Okay. And I know. So I, I know. It, but and, and I did get a lot of stuff like for free. It would have cost triple what I paid or at least, but I know. You know I, I don't know. I'm still paid probably 40, 50 grand or something. Um, yeah. Like, but I ended up doing it at a client's house and so was able to sell it. Everything worked out because then sold it. Yeah. Getting back to the wedding. Journey, yeah. Uh, I, it ended up, we just found out it was this new venue, which was, which is my dream house that I was talking about, like where it was like one day and it just matched the theme. And and I didn't, I never thought I would pick it. I saw it on the, on the hanger. I was like, nah. And my friend told me to try it on. She's like, just just humor me. Try it on. Oh, pretty. It's like romantic and Victorian where you would have thought you'd do something more. Like, it's gorgeous <laughs> though. That- traditional. And then, yeah, the how. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's like, looks like the same uh, stance. That's hysterical. That's stunning. Yeah. No, very pretty. That very is pretty. A French um, saying actually on my back, like no one ever sees it or anything, but then yeah. it's, and I got it before I ever met Romaine. And it says the only thing real in life are your dreams and love. Oh, nice. And you got to have a dress that showcased that. That's amazing. Okay. I happened to have that. And then it kind of went along with the romantic vibe of... of I got it. Gar- yeah, it's beautiful. Um, okay, so their table was gorgeous. Harry did a beautiful job. I like that type of not pretentious and fancy, like a homey vibe. I like the whole vibe. I like what he's wearing. I like that she's dressed casual during the scene. I miss and prefer 
non-costume Lisa. I like natural normal Lisa. She like leaned into the Erica Jane Dorit of it all. And so did Kyle. Everybody did. But the show used to be a little more down to earth. And I like that Lisa. Um, yeah. So then S- Sutton walks in and now the Tomasino thing is said, and I guess it's in another language, peeping Tom. So this is becoming like a prodding of this issue. Uh And as a side, so that's an issue between Crystal and um, Sutton. And now there's a side issue that seems to be getting resolved between Garcelle and Lisa Rinna. Because you saw a throwback to like something that happened and they're working on it. But now Lisa's decided that's a very producer thing. Well, why don't you have her birthday party as a show of as an olive branch? Yeah. So she she has the birthday party on her dime because we've talked about parties, but this isn't like a fancy party, but she's got a bartender. So Lisa throws the party for Garcelle's birthday, which seems like, like I said, an olive branch. But I'm thinking about the pasta and I'm thinking about when I shot with Kyle a crossover episode years ago on Beverly Hills and Kyle said, none of these girls eat. She said that to me. She said, no one eats on the show. And I served grilled scallops and I forgot what else, like something very light because I thought this is Beverly, you know, New York, we ate. Like Ramona ate, every Sonia ate, I ate, Dorinda ate, like we Eight. You have to tell me to stop eating in almost every scene. They 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 will wait to bring food out because they're like, Mary, can you stop eating for a few minutes so that we yes. can have this conversation? Because no one wants to see you with food. I'm like, I'm starving. I want to eat. Back in the day before Ozempic, everybody used to ask, like, does Bethany even eat? She doesn't eat. People, assistants of mine, everyone used to say that was the number one question. Does she eat? It was like an obsession. Yeah. And Dorinda would always look at me. Dorinda would tell Dorinda would always tell everybody. Like this girl eats. And she'd look at me and she'd go, I don't understand how that plate fits in there. She'd like poke <laughs> to my body, a point at my body. And like the plate is like mounds of food. She's like that. How does that fit in there? So she's <laughs> funny about it. But I don't think anybody ate. I was looking at if anybody ate. Kyle apparently ate hers. I was thinking bolognese for this group. Like read the room. I uh- I would have loved it. Same. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh my God, I want to, I want to see how he makes it. And, and like, it looks so good. It made me crave pasta actually when I watched it. It made, I want pasta now. It's so funny you say yes. that. I want pasta tonight with Bryn. I literally want, I was thinking I want to make homemade sauce. There were a lot of like typical LA things I saw. There was the Ivy China that I have, that Ivy pottery. And uh-huh. I saw what I would bet my life is a sweet lady Jane cake, which is a place on Melrose. That looked like a, wasn't that that? I think it may have been. Yeah. It yeah. May have been. It looked like I, it. Yeah. And like she did a nice duck horn wine was a very nice wine. Um, like, and they're all giving each other all these lavish gifts, which I was thinking about the holidays and how I give away, give out so many gifts, but that like a third of my gifts are like in the little Hermes box or in Baccarat perfect wrapping. And a th- third of my gifts are amazing gifts, but like they're not wrapped that well because I buy gifts in bulk and stockpile them. And then at Christmas, I'm giving them away. So I don't have them like perfect in the bag, like all the Beverly Hills housewives do. And even they brought a bottle of wine with a rose tied around it. I was thinking everything there is like appearances, even the gifts. It might not be like the most amazing gift, but it's going to be in the most amazing package. (laughs) Yeah. I think a lot of people do do that in LA. Um, You know, I guess it's all, almost everything is presentation though, but I mean, I don't know. It's a very LA thing. I'm just very not LA, I don't think. I don't know. It's a status symbol. Coming in with that bag is like coming in with an Hermes Birkin. Coming in with the little shopping bag from the store is a status symbol. I was watching it and I'm like, God, they give good gifts. I was like, I just, I try to do the, I'm a horrible gift giver. And, and I, so when I do, I'm like, yes, I'm so proud of myself because it's something personal. I like doing something. If I'm going to do I want it to be personal where it's like, it's, I really thought it through and was something that's meaningful to, to the person. And, and if I, yeah, everybody likes a, whatever, a bracelet or, or something. And, and yeah. And, Everyone's going to be happy with it. You like a personalization of thought. Same same with me. I am an epic gift giver. It's a, I give about 250 gifts over Christmas and everyone is literally with the individual person in mind. I love giving gifts. I love it. Um, and like, it's just funny that Lisa has been friends with Garcelle for years because she was friends with Denise for years. And Lisa, I just want you to know, is a fixture 
in Hollywood. Like she's a permanent fixture that knows everyone, everyone. Yeah. She's been through every iteration of this business. Good for her. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I think everybody knows who she is. I mean, it's not just like, when I watched it, I didn't know who a couple other people were, the um, Sutton and I, I like, I couldn't say like, Kathy Hilton. Of course I know who she is. Um, um, well, I just know Crystal because of, because of the show, uh, yeah. because of like the, um, just seeing her out and stuff on, on same panels. And then who else? Oh, Kyle. Of course I know who he yeah. is. You know, Mauricio from, from real estate and stuff. Kyle's too. a fixture too. Different than Lisa Rinna, but a fixture too. So was she an actress or? Kyle? No, um, Lisa. She was uh, a soap actress and uh, then she really, and she was ma- she was a soap actress and then doing Dancing with the Stars really like gave her a second chapter. Oh, and okay. then she really capitalized that, that she took, she, Lisa knows how to take an opportunity and squeeze right. it and get it all out. So that's good for her. Now she's doing fashion and she's got two model daughters and like, she's, she knows how to reinvent. She, she's like uh Chris Jenner. <laughs> she's like another Chris Jenner, but in a way, except she's not managing other people. And I don't think she always makes like as strategic decisions. Lisa, Chris Jenner is like really looking at the chessboard. Lisa's just taking all the shots she can take. Yeah. Um, Kyle's like that too. Not as strategic, not as chess, but taking all the opportunities and not leaving any nickel on the floor of opportunity. And, uh, knows all the same people, but yes. Yeah, so, and Lisa's definitely takes, and I mean this, and this is going to sound bad, but like they say, it, it, this is going to sound terrible. Like <laughs> the most beautiful version of a cockroach because cockroaches never like die. Like Lisa Rinna is the most beautiful <laughs> cockroach ever. Like she, you don't bet again. She's not going to die. Like she'll be fashion, the model. She'll, she'll, oh. she'll be 92 years old and selling something somewhere. So she'll be selling like sunset that. at 92. Yeah. yeah. So, um, they're called, so then now, I relate to Sutton a lot. Dorinda would relate to Sutton. And I'll explain why. Ramona wouldn't relate to Sutton because Ramona will just like laugh off something. Ramona could say the worst thing about somebody at a table or would make the biggest mistake of her life. Five minutes later, have a glass of wine and let it go. She literally doesn't care. She would <laughs> forget it happened. Yeah. Dorinda, Sutton, myself, we're in a mood Someone has set us off. They've said us. They've said something. Someone's irritating us. We cannot shake it off. We cannot Taylor Swift it. We yeah. will just like. And so Sutton is in the moment, and she can't just go with the flow. She just her detest her detestment, which is not a word. Her detest <laughs> her detest <laughs> the way that she detests yeah. Crystal yeah. is in her body, and she cannot yeah. do it. She can't avoid it unless she if she's in that environment. That's it. Uh, that's so, I didn't know if there was something bigger when I watched it. I just don't know the backstory, but if that's it, I guess I'm trying to like that. Well, no, well, not like that with, when Christine was on our show, like, because we had a friendship before. So it, that was a personal thing for me. Like when something happened and I would just shake, like when, when, because I, I, I was just blown away by the behavior and things that were said. And I was just like, uh, it, it was a personal thing. It, it just broke my heart. Now things have happened since I just stay out of people's business. So if something happened, something like it, like with Chelsea, like, or something like that, I'm just kind of like, okay. And like, and it, and I do, I forget things like right afterwards. I'm like, Oh, I don't, well, well that's, again, that's well, I good. Don't know, I don't care. I'm, I've moved on. Cause I'm like, if it like is, is a personal attack or something that is changing my life. Fine. If not, then I'm like, I don't care what they said. Well, you're not taking the bait and I'm sure you have taken the bait. Everybody makes a mistake of taking the bait. The name of the reality show game is to take everything personally and to take the bait. So there can be a neck scene. So it could be an explosion, then a makeup, like that's the name of this game. And it also seems like this is very inside baseball, but they're like into the season. They're exhausted. You start to get stressed out. You think alcohol is the best idea because you're dehydrated and you're tired and you just want, and you get deeper into it. So Sutton's been called somebody who violated someone else. She just doesn't seem to like this person, which I totally relate to also with certain people. And there is a smugness to Crystal that is not taking the bait, but also taunting and antagonizing. Like there's a little bit of a taunting going on, which is totally triggering Sutton. And she wants to lunge for her. And I can relate to that. 
Yeah. I, that was, a, it was an interesting episode to, or an interesting scene to me because, uh, knowing crystal outside of that she's like it always seems like no drama at all and just very sweet and then i watched that and i was like okay but and there's always i always believe there's two sides to it too where if if you know that's something personal and and with the word violating she was accurate on the word however it can be taken a different way the way it said it if that's a triggering word for for something then it's like okay i don't i i see both sides but well, first of all, knowing someone as an acquaintance in LA is very different than being oh. in a pressure cooker with them on oh, reality TV. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know Crystal by any means. Yeah, I just I met her, and there's no. It's just it was an interesting thing. Like like the, um, the watching that scene was just interesting. Uh, I agree. I just I agree. I don't know who Sutton is either. Like, I'm, this is the first time I, I, I've never heard of her or know. Who is she? Sutton is friends with Kathy, and um, she's a, just a popular one on the show. She's good friends with Garcelle. She was married. She has a beautiful divorce settlement and is very wealthy. Apparently, she right. rented Kyle's house one season, and she seems like kind of real, like meaning she's, right. a very, you know, she's, she's a wealthy woman who holds no punches and I, I I don't know I've haven't I think this might be the only first episode full episode I've ever seen with her unless we've rewatched something else I think I rewatched one other one at a party with Crystal and her but I get I I get I get why she's on the show she's like the Dorinda character of this show she's a broad and she's real and she's cool and she makes mistakes and I like it I don't think that the characterization of her being irrational is correct and I don't and and Crystal doubles down with like, yeah, I'm not apologizing and I'm not changing the word. And she basically says the whole quintessential housewives apology. I'm sorry if, yeah. it, <laughs> if it made you upset, which is, uh, is not an apology. And more right. importantly, <laughs> I've always remembered this. This this group doesn't have a great sense of humor. They laugh and they laugh at like partying and getting drunk, but like they're not particularly funny. And for nobody to laugh when Kathy said, who is hunky dory? Oh, what the <laughs> fuck? I <laughs> thank you. I literally, when I watched it, I grab, I start dying laughing. And I, what the fuck? Up, and I did my mom's here for a couple of days and I took it and I was like, you've got to see this. And I was, I was absolutely crying. I was laughing so hard. And my mom just starts laughing. She's like, she really doesn't, Wait, does she not know? Emerged well, it's funny because be- like she I- said something in one of her interviews that made me realize now the producers want her to be that person. And she said some other thing that didn't land. It was around a Garcelle scene, but it was an interview. And Kathy said something else that was like not that smart and ditzy, but it didn't land. It wasn't like Hunky Dory, which was real. Hunky Dory was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought, I, I was like, is it a Midwest? thing is it or is it like just her size like or or like a country I don't know but she just didn't get it and I thought it was the funniest funniest thing ever same it was oh. something about with her what was in her purse or something they were trying to make force another funny thing in the interview but it it didn't land um crystal said you're just jealous I I hate the word what like what what upset okay I tell you Mary yeah. you're jealous of me like what why would I say that what would I like even if, even if you were jealous of me, like what, what, what is me saying that to you? Everyone else is going to think I'm such a jerk. Cause like, why would I think anyone was jealous of me? Why wouldn't you be jealous of someone 24 with like a tight ass that, or a billionaire or so like, you're not jealous of me. And why would she say that out loud? You're jealous of what? I know. Yeah. That word is thrown around so much, I think. And I just don't, I mean, maybe people are jealous more than I realized, but I mean, I just, I'm not a jealous person. So it's always, I, I hear it all the time and I'm like, I don't know. Like if, if someone has, I mean, yeah, of course people have more. You're like, oh, I want that. But it's like, you do it in a, like not jealous, like in aspirational. Way. Yeah. Like where, yeah, you look up to them. You're like, Ooh, how do I do that? Okay. Like, and it's like motivating. Like, yeah. like I don't know. I always think on a different 
No, me too. But even if, let's say you were jealous, would you admit it? Like you're jealous. Oh, you're right. I'm jealous. But like, why would you say, like, it's, you have such a high opinion of yourself to say to somebody else, you're jealous. No one's ever going to admit to it. And then that, then the person that says it just seems like an ass. (laughs) Totally. So Crystal said you're jealous and she seemed like an ass. And she opened up to a comment about, about your ugly leather pants. And that moment made me look at everyone's outfit. (laughs) And I, this wasn't a good outfit party. We had one in the Hamptons where we all dressed like clowns, but they were not, I didn't like, think of everyone's outfit. Garcelle. wasn't any better. So I was like, when she did that, then I did look at the outfits too. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to pull out outfits, but like considering what she has on, but I was like, I don't know. I, I wasn't really paying attention to anybody else's outfit. It was just because it was a conversation between the two of them. Then it does. It forces you to look. So. I went to everybody's outfit and I thought, this is not a good outfit party. Like, this is not, it wasn't Ky- not Kyle, not Dorit, not Garcelle. Garcelle had like fur sleeves and a big F hat everywhere with Fs everywhere. And and Dorit was wearing like a tie-dye rainbow outfit and the bolt belt was like all the way in the back tucked in a loop and like, Maybe oh. that's supposed to be like fashion. I don't know. It just, it didn't land. She had a D-I-O-R barrette. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. And her pink bag, yeah. which was a star. Kyle's outfit wasn't landing. I don't remember Kathy's. I don't really remember Lisa's. Sutton's had like a lot of orn- ornateness on them. And, and Crystal's shirt and those leather pants also weren't great. Like nothing was that great. I don't remember anything standing out to me like, oh, that's cute. Um, but I, I only remember the two because in that scene, I was like, I, I just looked and I, obviously they, they pan in on the pants and then, <laughs> and then they go back to, to satin. And I was like, Oh, that wasn't really a good choice either. But, um, but yeah, the re- no one else really stuck out. I remember the Fendi hat. Um, I do remember that well, one. This yeah, is the ABCDEFG show. They have all the letters all the time. <laughs> there was another, there was a throwback to a scene with Kyle where she had the G sweater. It has to always be like a bunch of, there were two representations of letters in yeah. this episode. And I think like Erica was wearing like a Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts band, like jacket that had like shoulder pads or red, white, and blue. I don't know. I don't remember. It wasn't the best outfit. It just wasn't. Was it, was it a black like leather jacket or something? Or? I think with gold or red. I just, it's, it's flashing before my eyes. I don't remember, but I liked her like plasticky interview look. And I liked Kyle's like for her and for Beverly Hills, her opening like yellow dress. And Kyle had a big like genie ponytail and like sequins oh, in the yeah, interviews. Yeah. I, the interview looks, I was always very, very simple and did not take it up a notch for the interviews. I They always were like, can you, my interview looks were just very nothing because yeah. I just couldn't deal. They they wouldn't let me um, do anything different in the beginning. And I didn't know. I just thought, okay, we're supposed to look like ourselves. But then on interview day, they do, they have someone for hair and makeup. The rest of the time, we just take care of our own. Amazing. Mary, so nice to meet you. Now we know each other. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. 